Yeet. He's currently one of the most hyped artists in the rap game. Just last week, he dropped his album 2093, and it's really resonating with the community. I mean, almost every song on this project had over a million streams within two days. Before researching for this video, it really seemed to me as if Yeet came out of nowhere and took everything by storm. However, that's not the case because Yeet has been making music for many years and he has really pushed through. Yeet is truly a hustler. Initially, I honestly didn't really vibe with his music, but now I respect his work and enjoy listening to it. For this reason, I asked myself, hey, who is Yeet actually and where does his success come from? And that's exactly what we're going to talk about in this video today because this is the story of Yeet. Hey guys, I'm Rizi Machiavelli making hip hop documentaries. If you like this video, feel free to leave a subscription. It's completely free and would greatly support me while ensuring you don't miss anything. Let's get started with the video. Noah Oliver Smith was born on February 26, 2000 in Irvine, California. His mother is Romanian and his father is half Mexican. Yeet's father was part of a band, which is why there were many instruments lying around their home like keyboards and guitars. However, Yeet didn't really have much contact with his father's music. What inspired him more was the music his mother listened to on the radio, especially T-Pain. In an interview, Yeet even said that T-Pain incredibly inspired him. He even suspects that he got his musical style from T-Pain. As he grew older, he started pumping his own music and was heavily influenced by Young Thug and Kanye West. He wasn't the only son of his parents as he also had two younger brothers with whom he grew up in California. However, at 14 years old, the whole family moved to Oregon. At that time, Yeet was just a normal boy. Looking at photos of him, he seemed like a typical model student and most likely was one too. He himself says that he was just a bit cheeky and teased other kids but that was about it. He was never really criminal, which is completely legitimate since his music doesn't portray him as a gangster either. Naturally, Yeet made new friends at his new school in Oregon and one of these school friends had a home studio. One thing led to another and Yeet started rapping into the mic for fun and found it cool. Afterwards, he named himself Lil Yeet. He came up with the artist name while being high, looking for a single word name that sticks easily in your mind. Initially named Lil Yeet, later on he dropped the Lil because it was too common. I mean, every second rapper nowadays calls themselves Lil. It's like, uh, I just wanted to do something like one word, I don't know why. Mm -hmm. And just make it like, like hella simple and like something kind of relatable. Like, people hear my name, they feel like they, they already heard of me type shit. Yeah, okay. The first tracks that Yeet recorded can unfortunately not be found anywhere on the internet as they were all taken down. However, Yeet himself says they weren't good anyway, which might be why they're nowhere to be found. Like many other teenagers do at some point in their lives experimenting a bit, here he took acid, which according to him, boosted his creativity. However, for Yeet, this phase was obvious only temporary, as eventually stopped taking it switching to other substances, but steering clear of acid. I was doing like acid shit, like, oh, okay. I was like younger. Not like OD in it, but like, I don't know, that's, I feel like ever since I did that, that kind of inspired me more to like... Music production became increasingly important for Yeet. After graduating from Oregon, he decided to move to New York as there wasn't much of a music industry in Oregon, whereas New York offered plenty of opportunities, despite facing initial difficulties in New York when recording, as he noticed his voice didn't sound great until meeting a certain SoundCloud rapper, Violent, who sent him presets for recording so that he could record better, leading Yeet to realize Hey, my voice sounds nice. And then began releasing music. The first track I could find on SoundCloud from him is from 2018 called Detour. Give it a listen. Personally speaking, you can clearly hear Young Thug's influence here. After this song, Yeet released several singles before dropping his first project in 2018. An EP called Deep Blue Strips, featuring the song Brink. Why do I mention this particular song? Simply because it was uploaded on Elevator's YouTube channel, which has over 2 million subscribers, allowing Yeet to reach a whole new audience by uploading there. I've seen some people online claiming that Yeet is an industry plant because this song was uploaded on Elevator's channel. 
Initially unusual considering Yeet was still early in his career, but anyone can sign up or apply for their music to be posted there, theoretically, meaning anyone could have their music posted there if it isn't trash. Many other artists have used this platform as a springboard, including the late X, Juice World, G Herbo, Shoreline Mafia, among others. Everyone has released on this platform before. So essentially it exists to push young unsigned artists, similar to what used to happen in Germany on channel 385i, with From the Streets to the Charts. Maybe some of you still remember it, you can definitely compare them. What was crazy though is that shortly after J Bands featured with Yeet and uploaded their song on Elevator's channel, J Bands 2 turned isn't exactly a big name. Before my research I didn't even know him but checking out his Spotify profile revealed collaborations with big rappers back in 2018 such as Lil Pump, Lil Yadi and other big names so naturally one wonders how Yeet connected with such people. At that time, factually speaking, Yeet wasn't known yet, having only released some songs on Elevator without any major successes otherwise. So how did Yeet connect with these artists? Well, J Bands 2 Turned had connections in the scene which explains it clearly. Yeet was already signed at that time, specifically under Foundation Media and Streamcut since 2018, meaning Yeet had been signed by a label six years prior, long before we could witness his success unfold. Is Yeet therefore an industry plant? Honestly speaking, I don't think so. At that time, Yeet was simply an underground artist who gets signed just like any other underground artist does. It's part of the process. For me, an industry plant is someone who out of nowhere gets major features and top-notch music videos, which wasn't exactly the case for Yeet since his hype only came years later when those major features followed suit. In January 2019 came out his very first mixtape, Wake Up Call, featuring lead single Stay Up, whose music video again got uploaded on Elevator's channel, Yeet didn't rest though, as in summer 2019 directly followed another project, an EP titled Different Culture, where two songs received music videos, Can't Think and Goat Emoji. A few months later, Yeet continued releasing, coming out with another mixtape, I'm So Me, in December 2019. However, by now all streaming platforms have taken down this tape simply due to label issues since it was released under Mega Millions music label. Obviously having fallen out with them, given no new music release for quite some time, along with a lot existing music being removed, often labels drop newcomers if they don't immediately perform well. This is nothing new, perhaps this was also the case here. When this happens, the money tap is often turned off and people can't release anything. This could also be the case here because shortly after parting ways with this label, Yeet released a song called Finally Free. And if we listen to this song now, it sounds much more like Yeet's current sound. Let's go all the way back to 2016. Here, Yeet was part of Forever World, a music group led by rapper Big Baby Gucci. Alongside Yeet and Gucci, Yeet's then friend Aiden was also part of this music group. Through Aiden, he got in touch with Big Baby Gucci because Aiden was part of this group before Yeet. As expected, Aiden and Gucci helped Yeet a lot. They introduced him to some people in the underground scene. Even his former manager he met thanks to Baby Gucci. Let's be honest, Baby Gucci already had some impressive numbers back then. If I now go on Spotify and search for his very first mixtape, I see that almost every song has over a hundred thousand streams. Of course, these aren't crazy numbers, but he was definitely much bigger than Yeet at that time. In the end, Big Baby Gucci also took Yeet to his very first live show, where this legendary video was created. Musically, Yeet is said to have been heavily inspired by him, which is completely legitimate. However, their friendship broke apart around 2017-2018 when the group split up. For this reason, Yeet moved on and reached the next level by connecting with other people. Big Baby Gucci certainly helped Yeet a lot, but he claimed that later on, Yeet just left him and Aiden behind. Whether that's really true, we can't actually judge, because we don't know the true story behind their separation. Therefore, I believe we actually can't know if Yeet is now a traitor or if he has become conceited or not, because we don't know what happened. But what we do know is that around 2018, Yeet joined another group called Slay World, which was significantly larger than his previous group with his buddies, as some SoundCloud rappers were part of this rap group, including Samus, Kenken, 
and eventually also Yeet. So far so good. Everything seemed perfect except for the massive success of the group missing. However, in 2021 things changed because here Yeet celebrated his big breakthrough as in April his album Alive was released and shortly after in June 2021 he followed up directly with the mixtape for life. The beats he rapped on were insane. They hit the zeitgeist so perfectly that it was clear his songs would go viral on TikTok, which ultimately happened. I think you all know the song, sorry about that. Which went insanely viral on TikTok. Everyone posted a sound to it and suddenly everyone knew Yeet's music. Of course, there was now the danger that Yeet would be labeled as a one-hit wonder. Some people claimed that, but he proved them all wrong. His last two projects at that time came from an independent label he founded himself called Twizy Rich. Until recently, he also had another artist by his side which was September's Rich. At that time, September's Rich was more of an underground tip. He didn't make money with music but rather with scamming people and was open about it. On Instagram, for example, he constantly posted tutorials on how to scam people. Yeet hung out with September's Rich before his big breakthrough and it must be said that September's Rich helped Yeet immensely. Since Yeet didn't have much success or money back then, September's Rich financed him a lot due to his earnings from scamming. After Yeet had his big breakthrough, some friendships started to crumble. This included the friendship with Autumn, who was also part of Slay World. The dispute between the two most likely began behind the scenes, but only became public after Yeet posted that Autumn had copied his flow. I have to admit that in this snippet, Autumn's flow sounds very much like Yeet's. Naturally, Autumn didn't take this lying down. In the end, social media beef ensued where Autumn said, back then you were sucking up to me. And then Yeet said, hey, you're faking your features. Yes, it's a relatively unnecessary beef, but here is someone again saying that Yeet is ungrateful. Yeet later had a falling out with another rapper colleague, September's Rich. As mentioned before, September's Rich had supported Yeet immensely before his breakthrough, but never changed after Yeet became successful. He still scammed people, took endless drugs, continued advertising scams on Instagram, and even crashed two cars. He insulted fans at a live show and simply walked off stage. Yes, he was a complete crash out. This is probably also the reason why Yeet separated from him. Because it doesn't look good when you have someone like that by your side if you really want to break into the mainstream. However, I think we shouldn't forget that in hindsight, Yeet actually doesn't owe September's Rich anything anymore based on the facts available to us because Yeet bought September's Rich out of jail and gave him features that brought in millions of streams and naturally money. I don't want to take sides here. Yes, I admit it's strange that Yeet has fallen out with every one of his day ones and essentially left behind everyone who helped him when he had nothing. But I also find it strange how people endlessly complain on the internet seeking attention and wanting a big piece of the cake that they aren't entitled to. What I'm trying to say is I've said it a thousand times. Hey, we don't know what happened between these people, so chill out. Yeet doesn't necessarily have to be a jerk like that. It's possible, but not necessary. The song Sorry About That went viral on TikTok. Everyone posted a sound to it and suddenly the whole world knew about Yeet's music. Initially, he gained up to 50,000 followers per month on Instagram, which is incredible, especially considering no one knew about him before, but he truly deserved it because at that point he had been making music for years and had connected with so many people. On August 5th, 2021, his next EP, Trendy, was released, followed directly by his album, up to Miros, just a month later. This album was a complete success with many songs going viral on TikTok again alone. Money so big, 
has 340 million streams on Spotify. Basically, almost every song on this album went off. Let me mention just a few. Get Busy has 145 million streams. You Could Tell 67 million. Turban 122 million. Bro, suddenly Yeet became the shit and that's why people thought he came out of nowhere and crushed everything. But at that time, hardly anyone knew that Yeet had been making music for several years and fought for his success. Even the industry noticed it. Suddenly, Drake posted his song in his story one week later, chilling with Drake at a release party. Everything happened so quickly, an album deal with Interscope Records came about. Additionally, he connected with Zach Bay, who is one of the most connected people in the rap game. I understand why Yeet had such a huge hype, because he was someone you didn't know before. His music sounded incredibly futuristic. Plus, he appeared everywhere, wearing his mask with his balaclava, which became a trademark. He wasn't just one of thousands of SoundCloud rappers or street rappers anymore. He was Yeet. And that's why people wanted to engage with him as a person. There were further collaborations with Lyrical Lemonade, which is the biggest video production company in the rap game run by Cole Bennett. Bro, the videos are insane. If you make one with them, you can be sure it will go viral. Cole Bennett even arranged this whole Minions collaboration for Yeet because this Minions collaboration was actually a collaboration with Lyrical Lemonade. They uploaded the Minions trailer on their YouTube channel accompanied by a Yeet song specially written for it, triggering a completely new hype as all Yeet fans simply went to cinemas dressed up in these suits. I think most of you can remember that it caused quite a hype on TikTok. Suddenly all these rap listeners watched Minions just because of Yeet, and now Yeet is only growing further. There seems to be no end in sight, mainly due to Yeet being an incredibly hardworking artist, releasing at least one album every year, usually containing over 23 songs, serving his fans incredibly well. Unlike Playboy Carti, whose fans feel like they wait five years for an album, Therefore, Yeet is extremely celebrated. I also find it incredibly impressive that he still has such an incredible work ethic. Yes, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I tried to summarize and bring you closer to the whole person Yeet. Please let me know in the comments what you think of this video. Leaving a comment could support me incredibly as it would recommend the video to other people. Leave a rating and subscribe. See you next time, guys. Bye.